Hi, and thanks for tuning in for today's Connect video, Tuesday, November 23rd, Thanksgiving week. And uh, really hope and pray you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and friends this year. A couple of announcements to uh, remind you of Youth Haven Toy, uh, <laughs> I always say this wrong, Youth Haven Ranch Toy Drive is happening. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for all who've donated. We're collecting through this coming Sunday, the end of the last Sunday, November. Uh, if you want to help kids locally up at the Youth Haven Ranch up in the Eloy area, um, a new unwrapped toy. And there's drop boxes in the upper and lower lobbies. Singspiration is coming up for uh, a Christmas focus on this with some a French horn medley and things like that. That's coming up Saturday, December 4th at 4 p.m. in Chapel Hall. There are some invite cards. Um, let me grab uh, the invite card here. There's some invite cards around the campus, so make sure you grab some of these and invite someone to that event. should be a, a neat holiday Christmas focus. Poinsettias are available. This is a tradition we've had for many, many years. You can purchase one or more of them to honor or memorialize a family or friend, a family member or friend. They cost $18, $9 of that though. Half the cost goes to support Emerge Center Against Domestic Abuse here in Tucson. So uh, a very worthy cause uh, for that, but also, and then, and then you take your, um, your poinsettia home after the Christmas Eve service. So come to the Christmas Eve service and take your poinsettia home and it'll be there for Christmas day. And then, uh, Christmas services throughout the month of December. We've got invite cards throughout the church. And uh, just a couple of dates to focus on. December 12th is the choir program uh, at both the 9.30 and 11 o'clock service. And then our candlelight services on Christmas Eve at 3 and 5 p.m. Um, 3 o'clock is uh, the service that will be live-streamed for the Christmas Eve service, but um, please make sure you invite family, friends, neighbors, co-workers to those things. How about a couple of jokes here? Remember, if this is, uh, if you're new, this is a, I got this joke book, Exceptionally Bad Dad Jokes, for Christmas last year. It's taken me a year to go through it with you. I just thought I'd share the wealth instead of keep it for myself, because that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> I just didn't want to suffer on my own, is the point, Okay. All right, I honestly didn't think my father would steal from his job as a road worker. But when I got home, all the signs were there. Yeah. And I tried suing British Airways after they misplaced my luggage, but I lost my case. There you go. All right, Christianity... 101, looking at the basic doctrines of Christianity is what we're uh, walking through here. We're actually in the last three videos of this series, and um, let me ask you a couple of questions. First of all, what happens at the end of history? What happens at the end of history? Some people believe that the natural world is not created. It evolved from nothing, they say. We do know that that's a scientific impossibility and requires a tremendous amount of faith to believe that, but that's a video for another time. And those that believe in the naturalistic sense of this and evolution believe that this current world, the end of history, will just come to an end eventually, and there are various ideas and scenarios of how uh, and why that will happen. But the Bible is very clear here that the world, the entire universe, was created by God. Um, God created out of nothing by the very power of his word. God is the source of all matter, of all things in the universe. And this is important because God doesn't do things just because he was bored and wanted something to do. He does things for a purpose. For, for glorious and for great purposes. And God started human history by creating the first man and the first woman. And God has a plan for history. There is an end to history. 
And there's a point to it all. And the primary point is God will redeem creation back to Eden. When the devil, uh, when the devil corrupted this world with sin, this, this world was, was now fallen, we say, right? It was scarred and corrupted with sin. But God will renew what the devil corrupted. He will redeem it. He will recreate it. And today, the focus of this video is the first of three videos on the future. On the future. On the end of history, which will also be the beginning of eternity. And there are many passages we could look at, but I want to look at two key passages today. First, Revelation 21, verse 3 to 5, says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So we see some amazing things in these verses, right? Three things. For, first of all, for Christians, the future will be perfect fellowship with God. Currently, God is invisible to us. We know him and we can fellowship with him in spirit and in his truth, but we cannot see him. But in the future, we will see him. The next chapter in Revelation, verse 4, says they will see his face. Secondly, for Christians, the future is pain-free, sorrow-free. Verse 4, talks. he'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. Right, The former things have passed away. It says. Thirdly, these are promises about the future. Promises from God. And God has affirmed that this will happen. He said, I will make all things new. He said, these words are trustworthy and true. Right. So Revelation 21 is very clear that God has a plan for the future. And it will be very different from our current experience, from the experience we have in our life now. Now, the Apostle Paul also talks about the future, and he looks at it from the perspective of the creation, the fallen state of this world. And he does that in Romans 8, starting in verse 19. It says, For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. And I think that's a reference to Genesis 3, when God cursed the earth because of sin. Because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. So Paul, Paul makes it clear that people are not the only thing God will renew that God will redeem at the end of history. He will redeem his entire creation. It says he will make all things new, right? He doesn't just say, I will make, make all my followers new, all believers new. He will make all things new, he says. See, Genesis tells us in Genesis 1 that God's creation was good. In verse 31 it says it was very good. But when sin entered the world, it was no longer perfect, no longer very good. And since that moment, when sin entered the created world, it's been a fallen and a scarred world, which is hard to understand sometimes when you see some things that are so amazingly beautiful in our world. But imagine that's not as good as it was. And I would propose it's not as good as it will be either. See, Eden started out perfect, and it fell. It, it, the sin has caused us to have a fallen state to this world, because that's what sin does. It ruins things. But God will renew all things. He will return the world to its former Edenic state, or to its former Edenic glory. And I would even think possibly even beyond the greatness and beauty of the original, which is hard to imagine, because how can you improve on perfection? I don't know, but it's God, right? It's a God thing. 
All right, so you might ask, obviously, the good question, so what? Who cares? Why does this matter? All this stuff about the future, that's so far away. Who cares? Well, it is important. Three things. History has a purpose. Don't live in despair, folks. As you look around, sometimes it seems there's no purpose. The world is out of control. We're in a tailspin, all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure every generation has thought that to varying degrees. But don't despair. God is using history for his glory and for his purposes. And we don't really know what the details are there. But we know that he's sovereign. And we know he's providential. And we know that he is in control of history. Secondly, live with the end in mind. See, our life now matters. Your life today matters. Everything we do and everything we don't do impacts eternity in some way. So live with the end in mind. Thirdly, share the gospel with your circle. Only those who have faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins will be renewed and redeemed into heaven. Unbelievers, good people who are unbelievers, bad people who are unbelievers. If they're unbelievers, they will all face the judgment of God because no one is righteous, no, not one, and all have sinned, right? So even in a good person, if they're an unbeliever, they fall short of the glory of God. Our role, our job, is to represent Christ, be ambassadors for him, be witnesses for Christ to those who don't know him. And knowing the future should give us a great sense of urgency to do that. Let's pray. Father, thanks that you are in control of history, and we don't have to despair, but we know that you are in control of this, and you have a plan. And there's a specific end, and you've given us some insight as to what that will be like, and it's beyond our comprehension in so many ways. But we have enough details to encourage us now to stay faithful, and to help others come to faith by sharing the gospel with them. Help us to do that and be bold and uh, have a sense of urgency in doing that. It's your name, your name we pray. Amen. Hey, hope you have an awesome week, an awesome Thanksgiving week and weekend coming up. And uh, really look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday as we conclude the Aliens series. Be looking at the topic of social justice. What is it and what does the Bible say about it? We focused on that on Sunday. And then in the month of December, we'll work towards uh, just focusing on the birth of Christ for that month. But have an awesome Thanksgiving and see you on Sunday morning, either in person at 930 or 11 or on the live stream. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.